Hi, and welcome back to our chemistry flipped classroom where we're continuing our discussion of the quantum model of the atom. And today we're tackling the concept of electron configuration. And electron configuration is just another way for us to describe where the electrons are and therefore what energy level they're in. And that tells us a lot about the behavior of the elements. So just a quick reminder of our quantum mechanical model. In our quantum mechanical model, we talked about the orbital or the electron cloud. And this is a progression from Bohr's model of the orbit to the idea that we don't know exactly where the electron is, but we can predict with 90% accuracy where it probably is and we can nail down its energy. And as chemists, energy is much more important to us than location. And so we describe this cloud, this probability of finding the electron in this three-dimensional space. And then we went on and we discussed the fact that there are th four different orbitals um, and at each energy level or each period of the periodic table, we add one more shape of orbitals. So at energy level one, we had only the s orbital. At energy level two, we have both s orbitals and p orbitals, and they superimpose like this. When we get to energy level three, we added the d orbitals. And again, you can see how these all superimpose upon each other. And then at energy level four, we add in the f orbitals. So let's investigate a little bit about what's happening inside those orbitals. So we said that each orbital, each suborbital, can hold five, or sorry, can hold two electrons. Um, and so at energy level one, where we have just one s orbital, it can only hold two. But energy level two, where we have the two, the s orbital and three p orbitals, we have a total of four orbitals, we can hold eight electrons. And at energy level three, with the s orbital, three p orbitals, and uh, five d orbitals, we can hold 18 electrons. And when we step up to energy level four, with s, p, d, and f, it can hold 32 electrons. But it turns out that it's even more um, involved than that when we start talking about the electrons. Because when you have two electrons occupying the same orbital, we know that they have the same charge, which means that they're going to repel one another. So one of the things that minimizes that repulsion is this idea that within the um, orbital, electrons are spinning. And two electrons in the same orbital have opposite spins. And so when electrons are spinning, when any source of electricity is moving in a circular pattern, it actually creates a magnetic field. And so this um, opposite magnetic fields helps them to not repel each other quite as much. And so we have Pauli's exclusion principle, which says that two electrons occupying the same orbital must have opposite spins. And this will come into play when we start writing orbital diagrams. But for right now, just understand that two electrons occupying the same orbital have to have opposite spins. So that's the Pauli exclusion principle. Then we have Hund's rule that helps us again to figure out where to allocate electrons. And Hund's rule says that if we have orbitals of equal energy, so we have three p orbitals as an example, they each need to be occupied by one electron before any of them is occupied by a second electron. And that's because the electrons simply, if they have the space to not be in the same space with one another, they're gonna be in different spaces because of that repulsion. And then we add the fact that in singly occupied orbitals, so if we have three electrons in the three p orbitals, they are all gonna have the same spin. They're all gonna be spinning the same direction. And this is what contributes to things like magnetism. All right, so let's talk about how we write electron configurations. So electron configurations just tell us what principal energy level or period um, the electron is in, what orbital shape it's in, and how many electrons are in that orbital shape. So our first option for writing electron configuration is gonna to be to determine the total number of electrons, which is gonna be the same as the atomic number. 
And we're gonna fill orbitals from the lowest energy level up, continuing until the number of electrons is reached. So let's take a couple of examples. We're gonna look at sodium first. So let me switch so that you can see um, what I'm doing here. All right, so we're gonna look at sodium first. And um, so we're gonna to go to our periodic table and you can see that here's sodium right here. Okay, and we look at its atomic number and we can see that sodium has 11 electrons. Okay, so we're gonna remember that sodium has 11 electrons. So sodium, 11 electrons. Now, electrons uh, are always gonna be in the lowest possible energy level. So the only way, so when we write these, we write ground state electron configurations. So the lowest energy level is the 1s orbital, okay? Energy level one, orbital s, and we know that can only hold two electrons. So we're gonna put a superscript two here. Now I've only gotten two electrons allocated. So I have to move up. Now the next orbital is energy level two, also s, and that can also hold two electrons. We still only have four electrons, I need to get to 11. So we're gonna stay in energy level two because now we have another option. We can put electrons in the p orbital. And the p orbital, because there are three p orbitals and they each hold two, can hold six. So now I'm up to two, four, 10 electrons. I have one more electron that I need to say where it is. Well, the two energy level is completely full with its S and P. So I have to go to energy level three and the lowest energy level in energy level three is the S orbital. And I'm gonna put one electron. So the electron configuration for sodium is one S2, two S2, two P6, three S1. So that's a relatively simple one. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated electron configuration. And that is iron. And iron, we're gonna go back to our periodic table and we can see that iron has 26 electrons because that's its atomic number. So 26 electrons. And just like before, I'm going to start with energy level one, orbital S and put two electrons in there. And then I'm gonna move up to energy level two and I'm gonna put two electrons in the S orbital and two P and we're gonna put six in that orbital. And now we're moving on to three S, but this time instead of only having 11 electrons, I have 26. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill the three S energy level. And then the next energy level is three P. The P orbital again can hold six electrons. So I'm gonna put six in there. So let's stop and count. Two, four, 10, 12, 18. I still have eight more electrons I need to place. So I'm gonna move down to energy level four. Now that's a little tricky because we know that there is a D orbital in energy level three, but the D orbital of energy level three is actually a little bit higher than the four S orbital. And so we're gonna put the next two electrons into 4s. And now we still have six more electrons left. Those are gonna go in 3d. And we're gonna have 3d6. So you might be wondering how you're supposed to know that it goes 3p, 4s, 3d. Let's take a look at our periodic table. So if we look at our periodic table, you might remember that when we talked about the three Energy level three, we said that it contained S orbitals, P orbitals, and D orbitals. And notice that these represent the S orbitals. They can only hold two. And these represent the P orbitals and they can hold six. And that's why there's six blocks here and two blocks here. And then here you notice that there are 10 blocks and that's our D orbitals. But you also notice that although we said that the D orbitals start at energy level three, there aren't any on this row. They're down here. So these are the four S and these are the three D. So we can follow our periodic table to tell us 
the order of filling. So there's our electron configuration for sodium and for iron. Now let's jump back for a second and let's look at the other way that you can um, figure out which electrons go where or the other way to write electron configurations. So the other way to write electron configurations is to find your element on your periodic table and then work backward from the valence electrons, remembering that we have the S orbitals are accounted for in the first two columns, P orbitals are accounted for in the last six columns, D orbitals in the middle block, and the F orbitals are actually those two rows that are pulled down under the periodic table. So if we take a look at an example of doing it this way, we're gonna look at silicon and strontium. So let's jump back to the other camera here. Okay, and I said, we're gonna look at silicon and strontium. So here's silicon right here. So that means that this is silicon and we're gonna do strontium and um, strontium is right here. So that's in period five the second one. So this is strontium right here. Okay, so this is our orbital filling table. This is the image that I just showed you with the S's, the P's, the D's, and the F's. So if I look at silicon here, I can see that silicon, its outermost electrons are in the 3P orbital, and I'm one, two locks into the 3P orbital. So silicon, I can say ends at 3p2. And now I'm just gonna work backwards and fill the orbitals that come before that. So before 3p is 3s and it can only hold two. Before 3s, for 3s is 2p and it can hold six. And before 2p is 2s and it can hold two. And before 2s, is 1s and it can hold two. And we can always double check and see if we've done this correctly by adding up the total number of electrons. We have two, four, 10, 12, and 14. And when we look at our periodic table, we can see that silicon is element number 14. And so we've done it correctly. Next one is strontium. And so I'm looking at strontium in 5s. So um, 5s and it's one, two blocks in. So I'm gonna put a two here. Before 5s comes 4p and that's full, so six. And before 4p is 3d and that's also full. So we're gonna put 10 in there. And before 3d is 4s, also full, two electrons in there. Before 4s is 3p. So we're gonna put six electrons in there. Before 3p is 3s, full, so it gets two electrons. Before 3s is 2p. So we're gonna put six electrons in there. Before 2p is 2s, which is all full. So we put two electrons in there. And before 2s is 1s, and that's all full. So we put two electrons in there. And again, we can add all those up and we get 32 ele 38 electrons, which is the um, number for strontium. So that's how we write it the other way. Um, use whichever way works better for you. Um, and We'll pause here for today and we'll learn a shortcut in class tomorrow.